RBC Signals has over uh, 46 antennas at over 30 locations around the world. That's a mix of partners that we're aggregating the excess capacity of, as well as new stations that we've been able to build to meet customer demand. These customers range from uh, legacy earth observation companies that use our infrastructure to be able to expand their footprint, to be able to bring data down with lower latency for, uh, for important clients. We also have constellations of communication spacecraft, and we have a, a full pipeline of companies that are launching over the next uh, 18 to 24 months who are going to continue to uh, use our services both for early operations and for building out their, their commercial operations once their payloads have been demonstrated. RBC Signals, our primary innovations aren't necessarily in technology, they are in the business model and how we operate. So RBC Signals is able to aggregate the excess capacity of ground stations all over the world and to be able to bundle that together and offer it as a single service. And the platform that we've developed allows us to do that very simply for our customers where they're able to, with a single API interface, access a global network of ground stations and with a single billing interface be able to use all of these ground stations very simply. So this isn't an innovation in technology, it's bringing the sharing economy into space which has never been done before. And so that's the real innovation at RBC Signals, is taking this ability to share infrastructure and bringing it uh, so that the market itself is more efficient. So for me, what the sharing economy in space means is that you pay for those resources that you need, you're able to pay as you go, but also if you have a resource, you make it available to others so that the utilization of that asset goes up. So that, uh, for example, in our case, we have ground stations that maybe are only used a few percent of the day for a primary customer's use, but then we can take that antenna and make it much more active so that it's utilization is, is higher and so that the, the capital that's deployed into the market is used more efficiently. So just like a car might be put to work on Uber or a home on Airbnb, uh, we can do those same types of innovations uh, and bring that utilization improvement for the assets in the space industry. In space is that rather than having custom equipment for every single satellite, we're moving toward an era of standardization where we can start to share equipment amongst different uh, spacecraft operators, which then also allows you to use that equipment more efficiently. So to, to the question of is there enough ground stations, or are there enough ground stations to meet the current demand, I would say probably not. I think that especially as we look at how these constellations are expanding, they are going to be bringing down petabytes of data, and that just takes a long time and it needs to be done in a very smart way to be able to keep the costs at a minimum. And so I think there will be a period over the next few years where additional infrastructure will be built. But again, I think uh, using the mobile analog, uh, there will be a point where the amount of new ground stations will start to plateau and you will continue to refresh the technology that is available at those ground stations. But I think the sites will basically be developed and there won't be as much of a growth. But I think there is a, a period of strong growth that will still happen for the next three to five years. Right now, the way that ground stations are working in Earth observation are the same way that they've worked since the beginning of the space era. Right now, a lot of ground stations are limited by this paradigm of one satellite talking to one antenna at a time. We see that that will have to go away. Where we're moving to launching potentially thousands of satellites, only being able to speak to one satellite at a time is a, is a major problem. Also, the costs associated with that are prohibitive when you have uh, very expensive equipment that needs to be mounted on a, a motion controller. If we're able to uh, build phased array type antennas that are able to communicate with multiple satellites at once and track those satellites without any moving components, I think those are innovations that are just in the next step of where ground stations are going. The other thing uh, that we're seeing that is really impacting how ground stations will be delivered in the future and how EO, uh, Earth Observation, broadly is delivered are things like uh, software-defined radios, where we see the ability to very quickly configure radios for different configurations to be able to bring down much higher data rates. Uh, we think those things will have a significant impact on the cost of delivery for, uh, for Earth Observation-type platforms.